very warm welcome to our worship service. We are so glad you could all join us in this worship service. Please join with us and follow with us in this altar of service. The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. How good and how lovely it is to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If the Lord's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Lord, open our lips, and, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given to us. We want to thank you for the promise of your presence and the opportunity to share the gift of grace, love and hope. Continue to bless us and we pray, O Lord, that your spirit will guide us through this worship service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be joined with us in our opening hymn, number 19. O come and let us to the Lord in songs our voices raise. With joyful noise let us the rock of our salvation praise. Thank mm -hmm. you. Please to join with us in saying Psalm 85 responsibly, which is a prayer for the restoration of God's favor. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You parted all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. 
Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will be its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world to the end. Amen. May we take time to confess our sins to the merciful God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, we have turned away from you and our neighbor in fear, in shame and in arrogance, in turning away from the downtrodden, weak and the weary. We have spurned opportunities to encounter your countenance and in turning away from your inviting presence at the death of our being, we have rejected the privilege of being set free for the fullness of our own life and the life of the world. We seek your forgiveness and healing. Give us your spirit to be open to you in the world and to the world in you. We ask this prayer through Jesus Christ, our model, friend and saviour. Amen. Thus says the Lord, He has told you, O people, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Amen. Our theme today is Mission and Sharing Christ's Peace. Please to join with us in the Collect for today. God of peace, who guards our hearts and minds with the peace that passes all human understanding, show us your unfailing love and grant us your salvation so that you equip us with everything good for doing your will and preach to all through our words and deeds. Your gracious act upon the cross that brought us in peace with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Our scripture portion for our reflection today is taken from Paul's letter to Philippians, Chapter 4, reading from verses 4 to 9. The epistle lesson is taken from the epistle of Paul to the Philippians. Chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, 
if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise think about these things keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the god of peace will be with you here ends the lesson thanks be to thee o god In the words of Thomas Aquinas, we should have much peace if we would not busy ourselves with the sayings and doings of others. Mission as sharing Christ's peace. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this time. Continue to speak to us and bless us with your word. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. the words of jesus echo and continue to echo in us one of the primary ways of the messages that was proclaimed by jesus was the message of peace and today as we reflect on philippians chapter 4 verse 4 to 9 as paul carried this message of peace it would good to see what jesus said One of the very prominent verses in the Gospel of John, chapter fourteen, verse twenty-seven, very familiar to us: "Peace I leave with you; my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid." Very important and profound words indeed. received by the disciples and the apostles in different ways and Paul talking to the church in Rome Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to start he talks about that since we are justified with justified by faith we have peace with God with these words Paul goes around and in this letter Paul's letter to Philippians we reminded of Paul's journey <laughs> Remote city, which had several chains of political and social life, particularly it was very important in the Roman history. Very important war. I won't go into those details. Second missionary journey, and Paul is going there with this message of peace, the which Jesus proclaimed. And particularly when we see chapter four. Importantly, we come. He's dealing with two co-workers, both women, Yodia and Syntyche, which tells us that Paul was very much had a place for women as co-workers in his ministry. But importantly, he talks about calling them, about asking them to be of the same mind in the Lord. It looks like there is some kind of a disharmony in the congregation. with the people in the leadership the people with responsibility when paul took this message when he wanted to actualize this message of peace it was very real it's very easy for us sometimes to philosophize about peace to sit in ivory towers and talk about peace but paul was saying i have to make this beginning in a community called philippi and leadership role is not about power games leadership role is about responsibilities and paul indicates it needs a third person for mediation when two people are warring it's very important that we play the role of mediation many times we keep quiet many times we are silent wanting it to explore and then it to be probably it is late god calls us today to be peacemakers and therefore to be as jesus says to be the children of god in the sermon on the mount and today paul is encountered with this very important challenge as the leadership is grappling with the struggle to find peace but this is the mission and this must go on not is in part of greece and then paul goes most to the part of today's western europe very important 
city and church, Lydia, the first convert, probably we also talk about the mission starting with the woman in Europe. A lot of history, but in this context, Paul talks about in verse 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Words that we need so much today. We think about a war and therefore we need peace. We think of Tolstoy, isn't it? But then, today we are, we are realizing that even without a big war, which we were all expecting, but we are also needing peace in this very important time of this pandemic and this crisis. We need peace in our hearts. We need peace in our lives and in our homes. But Paul says, importantly, we are justified by faith and we have peace with God in Romans. And here, importantly, if you observe very carefully, he talks about a peace of God. That means peace in our lives originates from God. It is not a human endeavor. We have peace with God and therefore we receive the peace of God. And in verse 9, in the same chapter, in chapter 4 of Philippians, he talks about how there is the God of peace will be with us. Very simple steps. As we go through this, Paul is certainly thinking about the Greek word irony for peace, but also the very beautiful word shalom, which we use. We also use the word salam. All of them have the same meaning of peace, of wholeness, of well-being, of wishing well for the other and living together in harmony. Many times our dictionary meanings do not capture the whole reality of life. They provide only meaning for words. But today Paul is saying we need, very importantly, this situation where we want to go back and where, importantly, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. We want to comprehend. We want to understand our situation. We want to ask questions. But importantly, Paul's word today tells us the promises, the peace of God surpasses all our understanding. And importantly, we are at rest in our hearts and in our minds. When we go to the Greek original, there are two important ways to understand peace. Very simple. The first is the situation or the context around us is favorable. And then we can have peace. There can be another situation. The second option is we have freedom from anxiety. There will be unfavorable situations around us. There will be crisis around us. But how do we have freedom from this anxiety? The people of God, many times we are going through these two circumstances or context in our life. On the one hand, we are wanting to have favorable circumstances around us, like our own time today. We want things to settle down. We want the pandemic to settle down. We want to find a vaccine. We want to get back to our normal lives. We want to go back to our work come back to church. At the same time, in the midst of this anxiety, can we have freedom from this? Can we have all these things around us and still have a sense of freedom? I think Paul is indicating that this is very, very significant. In the words of the prophet Micah, we see how the situation around the nations are attempting to come together the very vision. But then the vision of the olive and the fig tree is so relevant for us today. And then we have this vision of where the nations have to think about themselves. Micah's prophecy in chapter 4 and chapter 7 are so significant for us today, particularly because as we think about our own time and nations coming to terms with ourselves, Today, people of God, the time has come, as much as there is a situation around us, as unfavorable as it looks like, but we also need freedom in our hearts and minds. And that is only possible by peace, which Paul promises that God can 
promised to us in Jesus Christ. When you look at the passage very carefully, in verse 6, very importantly, it talks about a very important phrase but very difficult for us. Do not worry about anything. I know you'll say, Pastor, it is so easy for you to say that. It's very hard, isn't it? Because we are so easily we get worried about things. About our daily life, our responsibilities, our family life. You know, something that is so much part of our lives. Something that worries us day in and day out. Maybe wherever you're sitting, in your home, there is something that is worrying you. And Paul says, yes, we do worry about everything in our lives. The original meaning would say to have an anxious concern based on apprehension about possible danger. We are apprehensive. There is something that is going to happen tomorrow, day after, a week after. We are thinking. And that is what Paul is saying. We need not do that. Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33, that by worrying, we do not add a single hour to our span of life. I keep thinking about this. When I worry about something, I think I do not add a single year to my span of life. And that is why it means that we are importantly committing to God. I'm thinking of the story of a, of a person who went to a psychiatrist and he said, the psychiatrist said, what is your problem? He said, I can't sleep well because in my dreams I can see a dragon with 12 different forms and three heads and it's quite scary. I almost tend to kill myself. Well, the psychiatrist says, well, we can deal with that. It may take about one and a half or two years and it may cost you about, about two lakhs of rupees. And this person comes back home and says, he goes back the next day to the psychiatrist and says, well, sir, I will deal with the dragon myself. The people of God, many times we worry about things that sometimes do not matter that sometimes do matter, but on things we can't do much about. And today Paul also talks about a church, a community, about two leaders. It also talks about the very important phase of the community life in Philippi and to us, to comment in prayer with thanksgiving and supplication. Very importantly, when we worry, can we take moments to close our eyes and can you and me say, Lord, I'm committing this situation to you. How many times have we done that? We may make phone calls, we may call people, we want solutions, we ask experts, but to pause and say, Lord, I commit it in prayer because I know there is a peace that passes all understanding all understanding beyond what I can. I want to close with the words which have been very inspirational in my life. Martin Luther King Jr., pastor, black rights activist in America. The night before he died, before he was killed, the previous day he gave an address and in the address he said this, very remarkable, very profound. Please listen to very carefully. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And He's allowed me to go up to the mountain. I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I am happy tonight. I am not worried about anything. I am not fearing any man. I like those last words. I am not worried about anything. I am not fearing any man. I think you and me many times we end up worrying and thinking about men and women around us. And it's important 
at this time to come back to God. Peace with God. When we have peace with God, the promises will have the peace of God. And when we have the peace of God, the God of peace will stay with us. Very simple steps, very clear for Paul as he went with his mission to carry this message of peace which the Lord Jesus had taught the apostles and the disciples. He went to this community and he said, this is the message. And the word guard our hearts because Philippi was a Roman province of the Roman Empire. It had its own history. It had prisons to guard in the midst of that, he's saying, to guard our hearts and our minds. And this is what this passage says. Dear people of God, at this time, I want us to, even when you're quiet, when you're alone, to read this passage again. To come back to this verse again in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We guard our hearts and minds and our minds in Christ Jesus. Let us be rest assured. Let us not worry, but let us commit in prayer and let us be rest assured of God's peace that rules our hearts and our minds and our homes and our communities around us. I want to close with a poem of Gerard Manley Hopkins, an English poet, well known, and a Jesuit priest. I want to close with these words, a part of his poem, I Do Peace. When will you ever peace? Why would thou shy wings shut? You round me roaming end, and under me my bows. When, when, peace, will you peace? I won't play hypocrite. To my own heart, I yield you. Do not some come sometimes. But that peace mean peace is poor peace. What pure peace allows? Alarms of wars, the daunting wars, the death of it. God bless us. Amen. Please do join with us in affirming our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll now be favored by a special song. Stand up, stand up for Jesus by the St. Andrew's Men's Ensemble Saint. The song is particularly dedicated to the late Mr. Chetan Abhinendra Kumar, who was a member of SAME for a couple of years. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift up his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be lead, till every foe is man. Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call of God. Dum, 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 the mighty conflict. 
singing as a closing hymn, like a river glorious in God's perfect peace, or all victorious in its bright increase. Loving and gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity to gather around your presence, O Lord. We thank you for your commission to proclaim the good news, the good news of peace, of justice and love. We thank you, Lord, as we seek your kingdom and your righteousness, you promise that all things will be added to us. Help us, O Lord, to be peacemakers in this world. 
Lord, to live as children of God and to celebrate your love. At this time, Lord, we especially want to thank you for this opportunity as we come together in your presence to remember people in need all over the world in our own country. Lord, it's not been an easy time for us as we hear stories and news of pain, of anxiety, of grief, of loss of life, of people coming to terms with their own lives, Lord. But in the midst of all that, we continue to pray as we look to you, Lord, for revival, for restoration, Lord, for healing and for all we pray especially, Lord, for your wisdom as more and more efforts go towards research of meeting people in need, of finding new ways of harmony and love. At this time, Lord, we especially want to commit the leadership and all the people who continue to strive towards peace, O Lord. Lord Jesus, we especially want to commit people who will be celebrating their birthdays in our church. We pray, O oh Lord, for each and every member, each and every family. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will grant them knowledge and the gift of your presence every moment of their lives. Lord, cover them with your peace and love. And may the life be a life which is abundance of your presence and of your grace. Lord, we want to come with couples who will be celebrating the wedding anniversaries this week. We pray, Lord, as they walk hand in hand. Lord, as they continue to look to you, recommitting their vows. And Lord, the biblical values that hold them together. We pray, O Lord, that there will be every blessing and favor in their lives. We commit to, Lord, all ministries. And Lord, want to pray for the leadership of the pastorate committee and other leaders of ministry and mission. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers and support of your people at Andrews. We thank you, Lord, for the St. Andrews Agape Emergency Fund. And we thank you, Lord, for the caring and loving support of your people towards this endeavor. There's somebody special with a special prayer request, Lord, wherever they are in their homes, as they're praying with us, Lord, we pray that you bless them and touch them. We pray, O Lord, for strength and courage. Lord, we pray that you'll continue to journey with us and help us, Lord, as we share this message of peace. That you came into this world in the midst of disciples as a risen Christ in a broken world to convey and to share this message of peace. Help us as individuals, as families and as a church to continue to celebrate this message in our own world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is God's benediction. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>